I think Longer Sets gives you the time to tell a story. And for me, DJing isn't just about, you know, I want to see hands up in the air all night. It's about creating a journey. It's about telling a story. It's about musically moving people from one vibe to another. With the DJ playing all night, it maybe allows a greater breadth of music to be played. It could be a real journey and allow a DJ to express themselves in perhaps more depth. I really do feel DJing, especially for long sets, is an art form. Look, in this day and age, with all the technology that's available, it's very easy to put two hours of records together and beat match them. That's not difficult, and that's not DJing. The art of DJing is to be able to take an audience, engage with them, and take them on a journey, whether it be for four to six, eight, ten hours. That really is the art form of DJing. It's about drawing people in because because you have an entire night you pace yourself different it's not about just coming in and banging out the hits the beauty of the longer sets is i know that an hour in when everybody's on the vibe i can take it deeper it's like right let's everyone's on a buzz the club's buzzing you can feel the electricity and it's like and now Let's go on a little half an hour journey of, of me taking it like deep and dark or maybe liquid vibes. In the marathon set, it's extremely important to set up the right pace. You know, the transitions to create expectations and make the people dance are as important as the pick tracks. Too many transitions and the people will get bored. And too many pick tracks and the people will get tired. It's about drawing the people in. You know, when I played at bars, the bar owners had specific um, needs for the night that they would be like, okay, you know, we want you to play something to cool them out, send them to the bar. Okay, now you can pick them up and get the party going. What it, what it showed you to do, what it showed me to do, was musically how to influence people. When you play for two hours, you, you have all this music that you want to, you know, fit in, but you have to exclude stuff. In six hours, you can, you can tell a, a nice story. In that many hours, you need to like, you know, mix like new music with classics. So it's the perfect time for that to experiment and reach new territories. There's always that one moment when you're playing a marathon set for me, when I feel like, okay, it's time to take it to the next level. When you have an emotional connection to the crowd, you feel it and you bring an element that maybe picks up the tempo, uh, that's when I, I choose to bring an effect, bring up the volume, let the beat kick in, and then just like the party go. I've been lucky enough to, to experience quite a few of my favorite DJs doing extended sets, but I think the one that particularly stands out is um, Laurent Garnier one night at uh, the end. I think he started at 6 or 7 a.m. and he was still going at 1 a.m and he went through everything. Starting off, you know, kind of really, really sort of jazzy and dubby, chilled out, um, moving into funk and disco and a bit of deep house and then a lot of techno. And, and then by the end of the night, we was all there, started pulling out drum and bass records and it was like, it was one of them, walked out of there in broad daylight on New Year's Day, like, wow, that just blew my mind, man, it was wicked. Some of the guys that really influenced me back in the day were guys like CJ McIntosh, Masters of Work, Tony Humphreys. They really had the ability to go into a room, evaluate the mood and the vibe of the room, engage with people and really manipulate the energy and the steer of the night. And that really resonated and stuck with me. And um, we need more artists and DJs to do the same kind of thing, I feel, in this day and age. One of the guys I've always idolised and for me really personifies everything that is great about the art of DJing is Danny Tanaglia. And fortunately enough, uh, back in the summer, I had the great opportunity of, of going to his loft space in Brooklyn to talk more about the art of DJing all night long. When and where did you play your first marathon, for want of a better word set, like eight hours or more? You see, the thing with eight hours, to me, that was a regular job. Everybody worked nine to five. I just was starting to work 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So that's what was normal to me. And I don't, still to this day, I don't consider that a marathon. 
the most legendary night I ever went to as a punter was at WMC Danny Tanaglia at Space. I mean, those nights were almost a, a religious experience. The way he would take a crowd um, over the space of 24 hours right into Monday morning and move people and never let go was just phenomenal. The, the way that Danny built the, the set, one record at that time with no rush, it was something ghost bumps, you know? <laughs> I remember that moment and changed completely my, my, my way of understanding music and my way to play music. I still take reference and draw reference from that night uh, to what I do week in, week out. When I came up DJing, if you got the job as a resident DJ at any club, yeah. you played the whole night. You started it off, you had the peak, and you closed it out. So for me, playing six hours was kind of a regular job. It was sort of like you're in the booth, you're getting your records set up, and you would see the lights go off, and you'd be like, DJ, you ready? <laughs> no. All right, we'll open the doors, and you start the song. To do those journeys has a lot to do with me starting the night. So the people that are coming in, if they're the first people there, you know they're there for whatever I'm about to give. I miss that. So. <clears throat> I'm getting all choked up. <laughs> Back then you, you just played all night and you didn't really think about it. Like it's just, that's just how it is. Because that's how I started. I was promoting my own parties and in the beginning we didn't book DJs for our, for our nights so we basically had to play ourselves and that's how I learned to DJ. I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just textbook in a way. You, you need the foundation of DJing. And I think people who are producing music nowadays, the easiest way to perform the music is to start DJing and it's like a a bit of an abrupt, you know, move. Well, it's a different time, isn't it? You know, producers have to DJ. You know, a lot of the, the new DJs are producers. They make tunes and so they have to go out and play them tunes. Whereas I come from an era where I went out to buy records and I would camp out in the record store every day. I used to stand at the counter like that, waiting for new white labels to come in to get them to then ride home. Pretty awkward when you're on your BMX with a bag full of 12 inch records lopsided. But then you get home and then that's all you want to do is mix. And I come from that era, like, D, like DJing. So Fridays would be about coming to this road here in Soho, Darblay Street. This was like the hub of dance music uh, between like the early 90s and the beginning of the 2000s. You had Uptown Records over there, Defected's office were here, um, and you used to come here on a Friday night as you jump in the van after work, guaranteed to get a parking ticket, but you didn't care. You know, this was your way into the industry. This is how you met people. You rubbed shoulders with you know, some of the biggest superstars, literally by being in the shop with them, listening to records next to them. It was quite mind-blowing, really. There were so many different kind of types of music that would just fall under what you'd play at a club. Like I said, it'd be everything from soul, funk, disco, jazz, as long as it worked on the floor. We used to put it in the mix. This is it, at number three at Darbley Street. This was once the home of Uptown Records. Every shop kind of had its own identity, and Uptown was very much known and synonymous for sort of disco and US house. I spent many a Friday afternoon in here being ripped off by a good friend of mine, ATFC Brian, ridiculously overpriced imports, but picked up some great sounds. Shame it's gone. I think as a DJ, to a degree, you're obliged when you're booked as a headline act to go in and give people what they want. But I really feel that the art of DJing in its purest form is much more than that. It's much more than being a jukebox. It's, um, it's, it's an expression of what you're about musically, especially if you make music and you're a producer. It's the opportunity to go into a room and, and say to people, this is what I'm about from here to here. And that is very hard to do within two hours. And I think, um, we need to go back more to the really core values and, uh, and the ethos of, of DJ and where it really started and began back in the early 80s where it would be one DJ one night. I think it just started getting all lost when you started seeing the raves and the flyers with a ton of DJs. 
be this room, that room, and I don't know. My imagination was this flyer's got to be more exciting than the actual party. It's obviously very tempting for, for promoters, especially at festivals, to try and ram their, their bills with as many name DJs as, as, as they can. They think the, the more DJs are playing, the better. But it, it can just mean that someone, um, for a lot of DJs at a festival, they only get to play for an hour or an hour and a half, which uh, means they probably just think they have to play their, their biggest bangers and um, not really get a chance to um, ply their wares in, in more depth. The funny thing is I meet a lot of guys on the scene nowadays, new guys, they won't play for longer than 60 minutes. It's like, what's the matter with you? And they're like, no, I'm only doing 60 minutes. You know, if you're a DJ, then I'll play for it. Like, I'll go in my studio at home and I'll mix for six, eight, nine hours, just enjoying the vibe. Especially if you're flying around the world. You don't fly around the world to work for 60 minutes. Let's make it worth it. Otherwise, why would you leave your hat? You know, that's a little moan there. But what I'm saying is, if you really enjoy DJing, I truly think that you could, you'd want to DJ as long as, you, as long as you possibly could. I would imagine that a lot of the younger DJs that are aspiring to be, they don't even know how to follow what the roots of it are. I think a lot of it is taken away from the actual form of um, developing skills and entertainment and being you know, a form of a musician. Some DJs have almost complained that they've um, you know, they'd flown half around the world and they, they arrive somewhere and they only play for an hour and it's kind of like, oh, I've, I've come a long way and, and, and was that it? And by having a longer set, it allows you to, um, to, to play more, um, a, a much wider range of stuff and not have to even think about who the DJ before or the DJ next was. If you play here, in, let's say in Texas, Boston, Philly, they have to stop at 2 a.m. Talk about the feeling of like, I, you brought me all the way here for this. I feel bad. I actually feel bad and sad that I have to stop. At least, you know, give me till at least four or six, something. You know, let me start earlier. Look, I understand that going out uh, and seeing a ton of great DJs on one bill is it, still great. I mean, there's uh, an absolute time and place for that. Festival, case in point. But it's great on the flip side to that to see clubs like XOYO and Phonox in London or Heart in Miami that are real meccas and have really gone back to that original mantra of, of one DJ just owning the club for the night. Here at Heart Nightclub, we have the reputation for crazy long parties. We now hold the record for a 40 hour straight party and we've had DJs play anywhere from six to 20 hour sets. It's important to give DJs plenty of time to be able to play. At a place like Hard Night Club, we have one of the few 24-hour permits in the United States. This allows the DJs to have a blank canvas and be as creative as they want. It's very different to prepare a marathon set than a two-hour set because the night is going to move in different directions. So you need to have your music very, very well organized in case you're looking for something specific, you know, to drive the night in a, in a different direction. I think mean, a person who's going to do a very long DJ set needs to have um, a very eclectic and wide-ranging music taste. Um, they, in a sense, have uh, got to be the warm-up DJ, the support act and the headliner. And they're not just going to be coming in at a peak hour and, and banging a big load of tunes. They want to start off perhaps a bit more chilled. Back then I didn't prepare anything. I just you know, came down with my, my bags and just played. Today I do way more preparation for my sets than uh, you know, I want to build a journey or tell a story. I mean I'm still as much of a fanatic of going through as many titles as I can to have my playlist just the way you would the boxes. Down tempo, mid tempo, high energy, alternative, tribal. And I, I've spent probably for, for, for an all-night set, I spend two days on and off and, you know, thinking what, what story do I want to tell? Should I go, you know, eclectic or, you know, atmospheric in the beginning, whatever. And I, I just want to make sure that I'm confident when I get to the club, what I want to do. It was more about knowing the fact that I'm going to play all night, having structured records that I knew would be good for the beginning, good for the end and then having those records that I knew would be able to take people, you know, to the peak hour of the night, one end of the spectrum to the other. But I knew I had the spectrum of what I wanted to play in the sense of 
how I wanted the night to go. I just didn't know what I was gonna play when. It's mentally, physically, and creatively demanding to do a 12-hour set. Um, there's no denying that. Well, you, you're definitely knackered at the end of it, that's for sure. I mean, you've got to pace the drinking. You know, you, you, you know, you've got to pace that. From a physical perspective, you need to be in a good shape. Sleep as much as possible the previous days. And the most important thing, not drink alcohol the first six hours. Don't too much tequila. Yeah, the back, the back can hurt. I remember the, fir the first one after Brixton Academy that, that I did, I fell on the floor, like at the end of the set, it was like lights up and I was just like to lay down on the floor. I was like, <laughs> man, I was buckled. I remember doing a show in Miami and I paid for 14 hours. I come off at four in the afternoon and I was just drained in every aspect. But you are so inspired creatively off the back of those sort of shows. It, it invokes all sorts of creativity. When you leave the show, you think of the music to make and you live off, you buzz off that show for weeks. The times where I've played the all night sets, I never even think about, you know, getting tired. I, I just feel so, you know, pumped up and get this adrenaline rush from, from the reaction of the crowd. It goes like this, you know. Sometimes when I play a six hour set, it feels like it goes quicker than a two hour set. You knew you could feel it inside when you did pretty good or really good or not that you're gonna go brag about it but we know when we've had one of those more than special evenings and by the end of the night similar to the first people that were there if they're still there 8 10 12 14 hours later even if they arrived at 5 a.m. but it's 4 in the afternoon they're still there they're ready to hear what you're gonna bring it down to I mean I think we've talked a lot about what DJs get from the performance of a marathon set, but I think there's nothing more um, unifying than at the end of a set going down into the, the, the dance floor and just being with everyone who's been part of that journey. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible and very unique experience, something that you don't uh, experience when you do a two hour set, you know, you're out the door, but when you come off the decks at nine, 10 in the morning and you just catch up with everyone and everyone's been part of this journey, that's special.